Hello, and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. I'm Brian Lowney, and uh, it's an honor for me to share one of South Coast New England's most prominent animal trainers, Eric Latender of Westport. Eric is a well-known celebrity in, on the South Coast, and he's uh, come to visit us with us today about and share his love for dogs, his knowledge of companion animals, and uh, Eric, it's good to see you again. Nice seeing you. Welcome to, welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Yeah, Who do you have today with us? This is Sky. This is a two-year-old German Shepherd. Tell us about Sky. Sure. So uh, Sky, I uh, adopted Sky about four or five months ago. She, um, she was in a home, and a uh, real nice home, nice people. It's just that she wasn't getting along with one of the other dogs in the house. And uh, there was some, some things going on, and they asked me to kind of help her find a new home. So uh, I took her, and um, she turned out to be such a great dog, I ended up keeping her. And uh, she's a real, real wonderful, wonderful dog. Very sweet. Does she do any tricks? Yeah. <laughs> Show us what, what she, some things that Skye can do. Okay, so. Before we get into the show. Just is this okay? Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so um, one of the things that I had with Sky is, and one of the things that we teach at our school is we always want the dog to be nice and calm. So we teach him to go to place. Right now you can see she's on that little dog bed. And uh, what we teach all the dogs that come to our school is that once they get on that bed, they can't come off and since, until, the, until we give them permission. So since she's on that bed, she just stays nice and calm. And you can see she's never been in this place. There's uh, bright lights, there's cameras, there's me and you talking. And she doesn't, you know, she'll stay on that bed until I give her permission. So if I say to Sky, Sky, yes, good girl. That's it, good girl, look at you, right? So she'll come off the bed when I give her permission and she learns to go back on the bed when I tell it to. Sky, place. No, no, not the chairs. <laughs> place. Place, there we go, good girl. Yes, good, place. There you go, down, good. So she was a little confused with the chair there, but yes, good, sit, down, sit, stand, sit, stand, down, stand, sit, down. And we teach all the dogs that we work with that they do the command until we release them. Yes, good girl, good, place. Very nice. Here you go. Down. Good girl. Eric, tell me about your your training school. Sure. So uh, our school is in Westport. It's right on State Road. Very easy to find. And um, what we do is we do puppies. We do um, adult dogs. We do advanced training. We do off-leash work. And uh, we help people, too, with um, if they're looking to do, like, uh, therapy work. If they want to get a canine good citizen on their dog, we help with behavior problems. We deal with a lot of aggressive dogs, dogs that have common behavior problems like jumping, chewing, barking, counter surfing. Do you know what counter surfing is? <laughs> is it something I shouldn't do? <laughs> Tell us what counter surfing is. So counter surfing is when you have that slice of pizza on your counter, oops, sorry, on your counter, and your dog, as you leave the room, to go answer the door or change the channels on your TV, your dog jumps up and steals whatever it is that you had there for you. Dogs love to steal uh, food, items, glasses, TV remotes. They like to steal those things off the counters. And so it becomes a big problem for a lot of dogs, right? Because you, know, you come home looking, looking forward to have uh, you know, dinner and you come back and it's gone. Or the dog steals your glasses and chews them up. So what we do is we help with issues like that. Jumping, barking, counter surfing, chewing. How long have you been training dogs? Uh, so I started working and training dogs in 1988. <laughs> started in Connecticut, didn't you? Hartford, Connecticut. In Hartford. Yeah, I got, okay. a, I got a job doing canine security in uh, Hartford, Connecticut at St. Francis Hospital. I did that for seven years. And then, uh, and then I opened up my business in 1995 in Fall River, Dwelly Street. You were the author of? More than one book. Yep, my latest book is The Deadly Dog Training Myth, and um, it's available on Amazon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Deadly Dog Training Myth, it's, um, it's a little bit of a controversial book because we talk about um, how dog training really needs to be done. And um, uh, it's interesting, you get the first three chapters for free on my website, so. 
you've trained thousands of dogs over the years, haven't you? Oh yeah, yeah. All breeds? All breeds, all ages, all sizes. <laughs> Chihuahuas up to Irish Wolfhounds. <laughs> and uh, your do the dogs travel to Westport, but they come from where? They they go everywhere. Yeah. From the Cape to Cape, uh, as far as like uh, Cumberland, Rhode Island, Warwick, we have people come in from all over. Lady just came in about a month ago from Manchester, Connecticut. She drove up because she had a reactive a little dog that barked at other dogs on leash, and uh, she drove all the way two hours because um, I told her I could help her, and we did. <laughs> <laughs> Another successful uh, Another success story. trainer. <laughs> Pet therapy is something that has interested me for many, many years. And I'm sh can you talk about pet therapy? Tell us about pet therapy. Sure, sure. So therapy work with dogs is, you know, it's really, every, there's a huge interest in it right now. Why right. so? Um, well, I, because... Um, you know, there's a lot of people that uh, that have, you know, they become anxious or they've had some kind of trauma in their lives. So let me let me back up a little bit. Let me explain. You have you have uh, pet therapy dogs, you have emotional support dogs, and you have service dogs. And this is where all the confusion comes in because everybody doesn't really understand. There's a great deal of controversy out there exactly. about the, this these topics. Exactly. And nobody really understands the difference between a service dog, a therapy dog, and an emotional support dog. Explain them. Sure. So an emotional support dog is a dog like Sky. Let's say I was, um, I don't know, I had some kind of, I was um, traumatized. I came back from the military. I was overseas deployed. And, uh, and I'm coming anxious. So an emotional support dog would help me in those situations where I might get a little nervous. And so the dog is there to provide me some stability. And so an emotional support dog um, is what you need uh, if you're going to go into like a housing place that, ha that doesn't allow dogs. So an emotional support dog is allowed into different apartments and housing complexes that don't allow pets. But if it's an emotional support dog, you can have that dog as long as you get cleared through your doctor. Okay, so that's an emotional support dog. Are these dogs certified in any way? No. No. It's just that dog provides you some kind of uh, security and safety and emotional support. And if, uh, and if your doctor, like I says, signs off on it, you can have an emotional support dog. Okay? okay. They should have training, though, because people bring their emotional support dogs with them. Right? And um, the reason there's a lot of controversy is because if you have an emotional support dog that's not well trained, now we can have some issues because people are walking into restaurants, Home Depot, bookstores and the dogs are barking the dogs are growling and so that causes a lot of problems so if you're gonna have an emotional support dog it should be very well trained like our girl sky here right see how she's we're having a conversation she's on her bed and we could teach her to do this just on the floor without the bed so that's an emotional support dog a therapy dog is usually a dog that goes someplace with a handler to a hospital a nursing home um, I think over at, I think I think it's either in Swansea or Fall River Library. They actually read to the dog. The kids read to the dog. I remember doing stories in the <laughs> newspaper about that. That's yeah. a big thing. Right. And so that's in a the town of Dartmouth. Dartmouth. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So that's that's a therapy dog where the handler, like you or I, show up someplace with our dog to provide therapy for the patients, the children whoever, wherever we're going. They visit hospitals, hospitals and homes, homes and things. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now that dog <laughs> doesn't need to be, but it should be certified. And there are different certifications that you can get for therapy dogs. Um, the most popular is Therapy Dogs International. So you could, you could go through their testing. Uh, once you pass their test, your dog gets certified as a therapy dog. But it doesn't, the dog doesn't always need to be certified to go to hospitals. There's plenty of dogs that go to hospitals and nursing homes, and they don't have any certification. They're just good dogs. But they should get a therapy dog um, certification. So that's a therapy dog. Then you have a service dog. Okay, now a service dog provides a function for the individual. So if um, you're deaf, if you're blind, seeing eye dogs, dogs for deaf people, if uh, there's a possibility that you could go into a seizure, 
Um, that's, that's the dog doing a function for the person. Service dogs are allowed everywhere. Service dog can't be turned away from any place. Restaurants, hospitals, uh, planes, you see? So service dog, because it provides a function for that person, an actual physical function, okay? And so we have therapy dogs, emotional support dogs, and service dogs, right? <laughs> and everybody thinks that all these dogs can just go anywhere. The only one that can is a certified service dog. That's where you can't be turned away from any place. Does that make sense? I recently was on an airplane. Yes. Flying. Portugal, right? No, no. This was going to oh. Washington, D.C. Okay. <laughs> and the lady in the next, across the aisle, had a, what I thought was a mongrel, uh, a mixed breed dog. And she was very calm. The dog sat down. And the flight attendant was coming around and giving this young lady and the dog giving her little biscuits, really? canine biscuits. And I thought, that's not the purpose of what this is all about. Right. What would happen in a case? I thought the flight attendant, who was probably very well meaning at that point. Exactly. But that was not the purpose of her, the dog. No. Well, of the visit for the, to have the dog. Right. And if you have a service dog, if there's a service dog, that dog should not be handled in any way by anybody else, and nobody should be giving that dog any kind of food or anything like that, you know, because dogs, just like people, have allergies and sensitivities, so you have to be careful with those types of things. Tell us about uh, your work in, in, uh, in the therapy, and therapy is a very interesting topic. Yeah. Um, and just to back up too, this is why they have a lot of problems because they're having uh, emotional support animals of not just dogs. Did you see that lady who got kicked off the plane with the squirrel? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's where it's becoming an issue because people are trying to take squirrels and, uh, you know, chickens and... Uh, <laughs> you know, just Rabbits and rabbits. everything else. <laughs> so... <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. And the thing about a dog is, you know, a dog is, is just a different kind of pet than anything else. Because a dog really, truly is like our partner, right? Dogs work with us. You, 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 don't, you don't see cats, you know, herding sheep or, or um, you know, chickens doing any of these kinds of functions. And that's why the dog is really the animal for support and therapy and service work, especially service work. Um, but, but as far as what we do, what we really do a lot is we help people get their dog. We don't do any kind of certification or anything like that, but we will help them get prepared to take the test. And one thing that we do is the canine good citizen test. So we help Talk people. Talk about that, that's true. Sure, sure. Yeah, you, you, you're familiar. Oh yes, yeah, yes. very familiar. Um, so the, the canine good citizen American Kennel Club, you're a judge, right? Yes. How long have you been a judge? Since 1989. Really? We're getting old. <laughs> How did you become a judge? I became a judge as in junior showmanship. I, was as, I started as a junior. Were you like in 4-H or something? No, no, but oh, just I... Doing, just showing your own dogs? Just showing my own dogs. No kidding. And I was asked to uh, participate and start showing uh, at dog shows, and uh, it just took off. Really? W um, did you sh Was Carrie Blues, was that your breed? Yes, that was... Was that the uh, first thing you showed? I showed Carrie Blues, <laughs> and the rest is history. Wow, that's great. So, so what we do, yeah. <laughs> back to the Canine Good Citizen, is we help, uh, the Canine Good Citizen is put out by the American Kennel Club, and uh, there's 10 steps, and they have to pe pass each one. And the dog has to show that they're friendly around strangers, uh, that they can do basic obedience commands like sit down, come when called, walk on leash. They have to be friendly around other dogs, so they do a test where the dogs pass each other. Then they come back and the dogs have to sit. Uh, they have to show that they can be groomed, that they don't get startled easy. So the dog passes all 10, they get certified, not by me, but by the American Kennel Club. They get certified by the American Kennel Club. And they get a certificate. Exactly, certificate and a tag. And a tag. For their collar to show that the dog is an actual canine good citizen. That's usually the first step for any dog that does therapy work or service work or anything like that. The dog passes their good citizen. And so what we do is we help people prepare for that test. And then uh, we have someone come in and they test all the dogs. If your dog passes, off you go, you get certification. And then a lot of times they go from there to continue the therapy work. 
But the big thing is, is that, like you said, the dog has to be very friendly. The dog has to be under your control. If you can do any kind of therapy, or if you're even thinking about it, you know, because um, some of these dogs come in and, you know, they're, uh, you know, biting the leash and dragging the owner in. The owner's bandaged up from the dog pulling <laughs> them over. <laughs> right? I bet you've seen some interesting situations. I always tell everybody, I can always, if you put me in a room full of dog owners, say there's 10 dog owners there, right? I can pick out who owns a lab. Do you know how I can pick them out? How? They're usually holding a cane or bandaged up or bruised up some way. <laughs> because the labs... They've been through the war. <laughs> right. Because the labs usually tend to, uh, to get so excited. And I love labs. I love labs. But they're just so excitable that they, uh, they tend to injure their owners real easily. So, But yeah, so that's what we do is we help them prepare for that. And the, um, and the therapy work. And they go on to, after they've gotten their, uh, their title, certificate? their certificate, yep. they go on to uh, work in, uh, they, they volu they're mostly oh, it's volunteers. It's all volunteer, yeah. Volunteers. Yeah. For therapy. They volunteer yep. in uh, a variety of situations. Exactly. Plenty of places that, uh, you know, there's plenty of places that would love to have dogs come in. You know, um, pediatric floors and hospitals, uh, elderly housing, you know, all these places. It's a big movement. Uh, I did a story this week. Did you? On story uh, on uh, several people who are suffering. They have a memory cafe mm. and they are working with uh, patients, Alzheimer's patients. Right. And uh, patients with uh, cognitive impairment. Sure. And uh, that's a big movement with dogs. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they fill, you know, a huge need. You know, having the dogs there provides, um, you know, with the dog there provides company. Uh, it's always enjoyable to be around dogs if you like them and you're not allergic to them. But, uh, and that's another problem too, is that you have these dogs coming on planes, with a lot of allergies, you know. And that's why there's problems with dogs going to places like hotels and restaurants because the allergies, <laughs> right? What do you do? <laughs> you have a dog that's, seeing eye dog, service dog, and then you have somebody who's got big time allergies. And that's why, again, it's creating a lot of problems. That's why Labradoodles are so popular, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, very <laughs> much so. <laughs> you see Labradoodles everywhere because supposedly they're not supposed to affect people that are allergic to dogs because of the poodle part of it, as you already know. And people are overbreeding them. Oh. And people are, as you know, uh, selling these dogs, puppies, at outrageous big, prices. Big, big, big dollars, yeah. Two yeah. and three and four thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Where, where they should be coming to the pound yeah. and finding a beautiful, suitable puppy or an older dog. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, people are leery of going to pounds sometimes because they're afraid of the baggage they might get. You know, they're afraid that the dog's going to have issues. Um, and a lot of them do, you know, that's why they end up there. Um, but a lot of these problems that dogs have can easily be solved, easily. You know, jumping problems, barking, pulling on leash, uh, chewing, they can easily be solved. It's really, really easy. So, um, and a lot of those dogs go on to make great pets, great therapy dogs, some of them great service dogs, even emotional support dogs. So, it's always a good place to start, going to a shelter. What is your favorite breed? <laughs> uh, probably German Shepherd. <laughs> I like German Shepherds, I like Belgian Malinois. I love Rottweilers. I think a lot of the big working breeds, you know. But I do have a, at home, believe it or not, I have a Maltese Poodle mix too. Eight pounds. <laughs> Keeps you going. <laughs> it's uh, came part of the relationship with my wife. <laughs> What about you? You still a carry blue guy? I am still. I don't have carries anymore, but. But I mean, is that your favorite breed? Yeah, I love all the terriers. I, I'm you? very partial to the terriers. What about Jack I Russells? Love Jack Russells. <laughs> I worked with a little puppy today, about this big. Little guy? Oh my gosh. This wonderful little Jack Russell uh, named Belle. Cute, cute little thing. A lot of, very hardy, a lot of fun. <laughs> but you like all terriers? I do, I do. What are some of the uh, 
misconceptions that many people, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, need, uh, they don't have a clue, rather. I should <laughs> rephrase this. They don't have a clue as to how to find a good dog. What, what are some of the things they need to do? Well, um, yeah, so, so the, I, I guess the first thing that I would always tell someone to do is you should um, try to fit a dog that fits your personality, right? Some people are really, really active. Some people are a little bit more laid back. You know, like what, what, what do you like to do on Sunday afternoon? You like to sit on the couch and watch football or movies, right? Then you probably shouldn't get a Border Collie, <laughs> right? But if, if you like a more laid back dog, a big Mastiff, right? Bull Mastiffs like to hang out, Bulldogs, right? English Bulldogs, they like, they're not high energy like a Border Collie or a lot of Terriers. So first, I think you have to find the right dog that matches your personality. And then once you have that, I think it's always a good idea to, um, you know, look up, if you can, on what the dog's traits are. You know, is it a herding breed? Is it a, a terrier? And, you know, what they call terriers, right? Oh, yeah. Terrorists. Terrorists, <laughs> yes, of course. And then you have, uh, you know, the, the working dogs like and, the, and the, the hunting dogs. So you really have to find the dog that fits your personality. And I, and I never really fault somebody for it not working out. You know, like if you get, the, if, if the dog really doesn't match your family or anything like that. You know, sometimes it's good to find the dog a new home. Not every relationship works out, you know? And so, <laughs> I've been in relationships that didn't work. <laughs> we all have. <laughs> right, exactly. So, and that's what happens with dogs sometimes. And I think people feel really guilty if they get a dog that's not a good match and they hang on, well, that dog would do great in another home, you know? There's, there's a, and I'm not saying dump the dog or bring the dog to a shelter, but if you can find the right home, you know that's that's really good, and and it's and if you and if you stick with a dog that really isn't a good fit, then you're probably going to be soured on having a dog, right? And uh, you're not going to get another one. And I think it's great for people and families to have have dogs in the house. There's nothing better. Makes makes it a much more uh, lively household. <laughs> Do you recommend that people come that visit, like, stop into your training center? Oh yeah, and, and, and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. We 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 tell people all the time, uh, you know, stop in. You can talk to us. You can sit in on a class. See how we do things. You know, because because the number one reason dogs end up in shelters or being euthanized or being dumped somewhere is because of behavior problems, right? There's only so long someone's going to live with a dog peeing on the floor. <laughs> it's only so long. I had a, I had a dog come in um, a couple months ago, and it was jumping. And they were like literally an hour away from rehoming that dog because uh, the grandfather was on blood thinners. So every time the dog jumped, even though the dog was just jumping, he was cutting him. And so took care of that problem. A very serious issue. Becomes a serious issue, right? Jumping doesn't seem like a big problem, but this dog almost ended up at his shelter because he was jumping. So we took care of the problem. Dog stayed in the home. Everything's good. What about going to dog shows? Do you I'm going. Um, so I'm going to be, my, my wife is from Western Mass. Yes, yes. Yeah, and um, so we're going up there for Thanksgiving, and they have the big show. the big For the Thanksgiving cluster. Cluster, four, exactly. Four days of dog shows. Yes. Are you going to be there? Uh, I may. Uh, yeah. I have judged there many, I many mean, times I'm no kidding. over the years. That's a wonderful opportunity to see fabulous dogs. Yeah, yeah. So we're going up for that one. So we're going to do that the day after Thanksgiving. You're going to go over and oh, yeah. see some great, great dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all show, right? There's no competitive? No, be, there is an obedience this year, and there's going to be rally. Oh, really? And, uh, you know, th this is something we, we, we're running out of time. Okay. But the, no, but the thing is, there are so many uh, different ways that people can work with their dogs. Exactly. There are so many pursuits. Right. Doesn't have to just be therapy or emotional support. They can do agility. They can do rallyo. They can do competitive obedience. They can do dog shows. Like a lot of people are doing dock diving. Dock diving has become real popular, especially around here. What a great place to do it, right? Dock diving is great. Uh, all, all. Uh, it's. 
people don't have to stay there. I know people who are out every night <laughs> yeah. doing a different per activity. Right. And so. having fun. Yeah. And they're learning a great deal and they've made great friends. And it, it keeps their dogs in good shape and Absolutely. they're very active. Exactly. Better than sitting around all night. Unfortunately, we have so many people, so many dogs that end up in shelters. Mm. And there's a growing need for people, for uh, people to, uh, for uh, pets mm. out there in the community mm -hmm. who are, who need food. Mm. What are some uh, recommendations that you have for uh, giving to shelters? Uh, as far as which shelters to give to, or no? Uh, what are some ways people can give to sh to pet dog shelters and cat shelters? And oh yeah, yeah. There's so there's a lot of different ways because most shelters need volunteers. So you can start with your time. <laughs> I've worked in shelters for you know years, and I've worked in most of the shelters in the area. Um, so the first one is you start with your time. Uh, second thing is they always are looking for supplies. You know, food, uh, bedding. Um, treats, you know, and then donations, money donations, because those dogs, it's not cheap to take care of 10 dogs at a time as far as vet care, you know, feeding them, making sure they're properly groomed and uh, well taken care of. So those are some, a lot of good ways to, uh, and there's so many great shelters in the area. Swansea has a great shelter. They're really hard working over there. Um, Dartmouth, Fairhaven, you know, all over the place, so many great shelters. So, um, and they all need some help. Right, exactly. Okay, so. well, Eric, it has been absolutely wonderful to see you again. Thanks. We will talk again. Uh, we'll get together for another session of Fur, Fins, and Feathers. And uh, if I don't see you during the holidays, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.